Hello and welcome to The Culture Magazine here on I-24 News. I'm Oded Grober. Thank you so much for joining me. Today on our show, we'll talk about the new Jeff Koons retrospective at the Whitney in New York. The Alayev family, a Bukhari musical dynasty. And we'll take a closer look at actress Melissa McCarthy. We begin at the Whitney Museum in New York, which is holding a large-scale retrospective for Jeff Koontz, the artist which has dominated the pop art world in the last three decades. This comprehensive exhibition is the last one to be mounted at the current Whitney building before moving to a new space. To hear more about this, we invited Hadas Keidal, an art curator, to our studio. Hadas, thanks for coming in. Thank you for inviting me. So um, what's at this uh, retrospective? What's so special about it? Why are we talking about it? Okay, Jeff Koontz is the most successful living artist today. Um, he's coined as the most su successful American artist since Andy Warhol. Mm -hmm. And last year he became the most expensive living artist when he sold the balloon dog for $58.4 million. So we're talking about a very, very successful, expensive artist. And the connection between success and money mm -hmm. is, um, of course, at the highlight of this exhibition. Yeah, and it's very apparent with, with his works. It, exactly. it fits his personality also to, to a large extent. Exactly. So what we have here is a survey of his work from the late 70s till actually two days before the opening of the retrospective. <laughs> Which is when they, they finished the last piece. Exactly. The wow. Play-Doh piece was finished um, just before the opening. And um, this is the first New York retrospective uh, in a museum of Jeff Koons, which is quite a question. That's really strange. That, 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 uh, it, what's the explanation to that? So there are many different explanations. One of them is that uh, Jeff Koontz has very high expectations okay. about how he wants his work displayed. Mm -hmm. so, so the prices of putting uh, 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 an exhibition like this are, are probably very high. The prices, and actually for this exhibition they had to take out the doors of the Whitney Museum in order to put in his large scale, enormous sculptures mm -hmm. and change a lot of clearance in the corridors to get the sculptures upstairs. So this is one reason, but there are many other reasons, I think also critical uh, reasons of yeah. you know the art scene in New York. Right. When when an artist is this successful, he's bound to have some critics uh, as well working uh, against him. What what are people saying about uh, about him about this exhibition? So uh, I think critics are really um, united about his first works, his early works, mm -hmm. like the basketballs and the vacuum cleaners. Mm -hmm which is actually, um, you can see the continuation of Marcel Duchamp and the ready-made, right. when uh, Duchamp put the fountain, the, the sculpture he called the fountain, which is actually A urinal, urinal yeah. in the museum. So in that sense, he, these early works are pretty, there's a consensus about them, but the later works are more problematic, especially these works, right, the, with Chicholina, his uh, ex-wife, uh, that, that he, he, he uh, too. I don't know that anybody would know who Cicciolina is, but a pornographic actress, a mem member of the Italian parliament. Exactly. And uh, he did some uh, controversial works with her. Yes, and this was a big heartbreak for him because it was also a romantic heartbreak, but mm -hmm. also a very bad decision, I guess, economically, because they didn't sell well, these hyper-realistic paintings. Okay. And you can say about Kunz that his paintings are... I mean, I've read horrible critiques, but one of them, which was pretty light, that they're like wallpaper, you mm -hmm. know, they're just really mm -hmm. banal and kitsch. But um, the sculptures are more interesting, I think. Um, the idea is that he kind of, kind of blows up animation characters, um, toys, uh, necklaces, like banal, everyday um, um, figurines. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a kind of childish game, I yeah. guess. Yeah. But when it comes to the money part, it's a he, game of, of very, very rich people. Yeah. And, uh, Why do you think he is able to bring in those sums? Is it because his work is, um, is so from the, the, the world of, of pop? Is it because he's so communicative? Or is it because there's real depth to his work as well? 
Well, I don't think there's real depth. I think his work is reflective in many senses. It's a nice way to show it now, but I think his work reflects the American society, mm. like consumerism, banality, a kind of shallowness. And when he talked about Michael Jackson, um, he has the famous uh, sculpture he made Michael of Michael Jackson and bubbles. And bubbles. And when he spoke about this, he says that he that he actually um, adores Michael Jackson, and he thinks that his, the changing of his complexion and um, the many you know, plastic surgery he had, he really adores this and worships him. And yeah. if there was anyone he would want to be, that would be Michael Jackson. Um, well, let's hope it's not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, but that, it does look like an impressive uh, 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 exhibition. And um, it's also a nice, I think, farewell to the current uh, Whitney building. Thank you so much, Adas, for, for coming in. Thank you. Moving on, the Alayev family, a Jewish family with roots in Tajikistan, are one of the most unique musical families in the world. The Alayevs are currently preparing for their 2014 tour of Europe. Daniel Campos has this report. Three generations of musicians in one same family, led by their 81-year-old grandfather, is something very rare to find in Israel. My father was a great singer in Samarkand, and my mother played the doira, and I learned from my mother and father everything art and music. My mother died when I was nine. Immediately after she died, I had to start working and performing. Singing and dancing their hearts out as an act of benevolent generosity towards their audiences is what you can constantly expect at every show of the Alayev family. Bukharan Jews are believed to be descendants of the ten lost tribes of Israel, exiled by the Assyrians in the 8th century before the Common Era. The Alayevs have a rich family history in Central Asia. Alo's grandfather was a very influential rabbi in Kabul, Afghanistan. Alo continued the musical tradition of Tajikistan and the Jewish music of Bukhara, and with his innate talent, he became an important figure in Tajikistan, considered one of the greatest percussionists of his time, and appointed the first percussionist of the folk opera company of Dushanbe, Tajikistan's capital, where he toured and performed for 50 years, and he managed to establish great friendships with his neighbors. <laughs> For many years I played at Muslim weddings and circumcisions and other celebrations. We would sing songs based on poems composed by Omar Khayyam. But in 1991 life would change for the Alayevs, following the breakup of the Soviet Union and due to the escalating violence in Tajikistan, the Patriarch decided it was time to take his multi-generational ensemble to Israel, where they wasted no time in finding loyal and international audiences. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Each one of the members of this family is a great musician. Brought up on stage, little Abraham is three years old and he already performs with the ensemble. And ten-year-old charming Amanda is performing a special song on stage. Although she doesn't speak Tajik, she has learned it phonetically to sing. In 2011, they released her album The Alaev Family and Tamir Muscat, recorded in the Tajik language and produced by Mr. Muscat from Balkan Beatbox. It was a big success, which prompted international tours in countries all over the world, being headliners in some of the most prestigious musical festivals around the world, such as WOMAD UK and the Krakow Jewish Music Festival. Sufi poems, love, and praise for the divine are the main inspiration behind their songs. Centuries ago, the great Persian poet and wise man, Omar Khayyam, spoke about the brave music of a distant drum, words resonant with the existence of one of the most unique families in the world, the Alayev family. See you, Europe. The Dutch Moritzhaus Museum in The Hague reopened its doors recently after two years of renovations. The reopening also marks the homecoming of a beloved masterpiece. More in this report by Sandy Fotis. Arriving with fanfare, girl with a pearl earring makes a triumphant return home. 
Having had toured the world for two years, Vermeer's famous painting takes its place again at the Mauritius, to the delight of local art fans. Girl with a Pearl Earring is one of the most beautiful paintings of its period, perhaps the most beautiful, and I like it very much. Actually, I studied in school about the painting, and it's really fantastic that I can see the real one in here. The Dutch Museum spent two years under renovation. Now, 30 million euros later, the 17th century mansion is reopened with a blessing from the King of the Netherlands, William Alexander. Expanded, restored and well lit, the classical building is now complemented by a new Art Deco building, which was formerly a gentleman's club. The reopening of the flagship museum of The Hague is a major event for the Netherlands. For the occasion, the Mauritius was open all night, with free admission for all visitors from 8 p.m. to midnight. This gave them the opportunity to discover some 800 works, key pieces of the Dutch Golden Age, from the Goldfinch by Karel Fabricius, through View of Delft by Vermeer, and to the anatomy lesson of Dr. Nicolai Stulp. More than a thousand visitors are expected to come daily to welcome the new age of the Mauritius. In a moment, we'll discuss the career of actress Melissa McCarthy, a rare Hollywood star. But first, a few cultural events from around the world. Famous American painter Saul Lewitt passed away in 2007, but his art continues to be exhibited around the world. His drawings of the wall compositions were designed for limited duration and maximum flexibility within a broad range of architectural settings. Lewitt emphasized that for each work of art that becomes physical, there are many variations that do not. So Lewitt's 1982 wall drawings will be on view in its complete state through September the 7th of 2015 at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. In Paris, the Red House continues its series of exhibitions centered around famous collectors. This time, the founder and president of the Red House, Antoine Galbert, will be honored. The wall is a long ribbon of 3 meters high and 278 meters long, exposing randomly over 1,200 works by 500 different artists. A partial view of their choice and taste, allowing visitors to create their own path. The wall, the collection of Antoine de Galbert, will be on exhibition at the Maison Rouge in Paris until the 21st of September. A sculptor who improvises photographs steps into the world of Ruth Bigger, an Israeli artist who takes a fresh look at photography. Portraits, landscapes, compositions, everything that moves is a good target for a photograph. The dedicated exhibition will take place at the Tel Aviv Art Gallery, Co. P8, and will remain openly until July the 5th. Now, Shachar Peleg is here for her recurring segment off screen. How are you? I'm fine, thank you very much for Good. having I, me. I'm, it's again. always a pleasure, it's always a pleasure. Who okay. are we, we're talking about so, Melissa McCarthy. Yes, Melissa McCarthy, yes, women empowerment, yay. Uh, but first, I must start by quoting the New York Times, um, which writes, uh, how do you solve a problem like Melissa McCarthy? Um, I can't, Why I is can't she a agree problem? more. Um, well, I, there's something in her that makes me personally feel uncomfortable, you know, her vulgar ways or vocal portrayals on, on the set. But however, um, she, you can't, you can't stop loving her. There's something adorable about her and the way she portrays her characters and her newly uh, released film, uh, Tammy, which she plays the uh, lead, uh, the the title role, mm -hmm. um, is released this week, uh, yesterday, in fact. Um, trying to battle Transformers Four. Good luck with that. <laughs> um, but you know, there she portrays once again the bad luck girl with a bad luck life. Right at the beginning of the film, she loses her job, her husband, and her car, and. This, this sounds familiar. We've seen her like this in uh, uh, This Is 40 and Bridesmaid and recently in The Heat and, uh, right. and Identity Theft. Uh, but still, the crowds love her. The critics a bit not less. So yeah, they, they actually, most headlines say this is not a funny movie. Um, but still, hopefully, the audiences will find it funny as they found uh, Identity Theft, which uh, critics didn't like at all. And still, people went uh, to see her on film. She is on a winning streak. I believe this is mm -hmm. the first time she's uh, written and she's co-written with her husband mm. who directs this film uh, Ben Falcon and she's a producer of this film as well and it seems like she's on a roll she she does have uh, uh, many future projects upcoming projects with her husband and others yeah. um, even though uh, if, I, if I must quote um, um, the Hollywood Reporter
forward as saying perhaps McCarthy needs to stick to being funny in other people's movies. But uh, <laughs> still, we'll have to wait and see. This is the 4th of July weekend. Wait and see if she, she brings it. I, I must say, though, I think she does uh, battle the uh, copy-paste beauty of Hollywood in, yeah. uh, in quite an impressive way. This is, I think, one of the first movies we see such a different leading role. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Comedy has always been the way in. Absolutely. Uh, we remember her, of course, uh, back in the days of Gilmore Girls mm -hmm. as uh, Suki, if you remember her. And she did gradually make her way to the top. So do you think, is, is, is it a rare occurrence or is she opening the door well, to... It's a tough, it's a tough question because I, I, I can't really point at any other actresses who have done it uh, yeah. big, if I might say, Not as, as, uh, but I as guess she we'll does. Win. And uh, yes, we'll have to wait. Thank you, Shaha. Thank you. Thank you uh, at home for uh, joining us today as well. Please do so again next week.